everyone. Welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zerscher, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to make yo-yos. And I'll also talk about different ways that they can be applied to a project with lots of variations. We can explore the stitches that can be used as well as the materials that can be used. So I hope you'll stick with me. It should be a lot of fun. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to receive an email notification, you'll need to click on the little bell next to the subscribe button. I love hearing from you, so leave me any comments or questions you might have in the comments section. And don't forget to check out the description section. That's where I leave links to all the things that I use in this video, including where you can get yo-yos if you don't have one yet. Go ahead and grab some fabric. If you have a yo-yo, grab the size that you want and a needle, some thread, and let's get started. Here's a little yo-yo I made. This is the smallest of the yo-yos, 20 millimeters. And so this is what came of this. And I just tacked it down once with the thread that I used which was a number eight eleganza. I wanted it to be something pretty sturdy. I can go ahead and st stitch this down with an applique thread, or I can just leave it. I could tack it down again just to make sure that it doesn't come undone. I thought I would show you now the medium, which is 30 millimeters. I'm going to do it with this fabric. And what I do is I put this circle down and I just cut a generous quarter of an inch beyond it. You can also draw a, a circle around it. If you look at this, there are little knobs in three places. And if you look at this, there are three dashes. Those dashes need to go over the knobs and that's so that these prongs, these cogs, line up with this, these circles on this. So when I put my fabric down, I wanna take that dash and line it up as best I can with this knob and push and you'll hear it snap. Now I'm going to take a number eight weight Eleganza thread and I can put it on a number 24 chenille needle. It'll, that'll fit through these holes or I can do a Milner's. It doesn't matter, either one. I'm going to, not the other end, come up right here. I'm going to go down into this one. So each of these, which are like little smiley things, you come up in one, you go down in the other. I'm left-handed, I'm going clockwise. If you're right-handed, you're probably gonna feel more comfortable going counterclockwise. Go with whatever feels most comfortable. Then I'm going to come up again here and I'm holding the excess fabric down with my finger as I go. Go down on the other little curve of his smile, holding that, silk, that fabric down so I'm not catching it. And I'm just going to go around doing this entire circle this way. I use a number eight Eleganza just because it's a thicker, you know, it's thicker than an applique thread, but it's still quite thin and it's stronger in the, for the same reason that I do, I did my tuffets. For those of you who watched that video on how to make a tuffet, it's the same kind of thinking. I want it to be strong enough that it, when I pull it to tighten the little gathers, it's not gonna break. I also want something sturdy enough that I can tack it down just a couple of times and not have to really worry about it coming off. So here's what it's looking like on the inside. Can you see there's my little stitches? So now I take, click this off and I'm just going to pull these little cogs out I'm going to pull my thread. Do you see how it just pulls it in? And there's my little yo-yo. So this one was, if you'll recall, the 30 millimeter. This was my smallest. 
which is here. This is my medium, which is there. And now I'm going to do the largest one, which is 45 millimeters. I wanted to use a fabric like this with emanating rays so that you can see how you can play with different prints to do interesting things with them. So I'm centering my dot to, and you can just see the outline of my circle. And as with the other one, I want to line up this part with the one of these dashes. You can just push that and then clip it down and you can hear how it clips and that's how you know that it's firmly in there and there it is lined up and here's my long line looks pretty good let's see if this one's lined up too yep i think this will this should work so i'm going to get my thread i'm going to use a number eight it's a variegated at ezm 11. i'm going to come up inside the smile and then i go down into the other end of the smile what happens is if you go into this end of the smile and then go to the next smile, your thread is covering this and you won't be able to remove this. So it has to be within each what I'm calling a little smile. So within each smile is where you're going to put your thread, holding with your fingers the fabric so that you're not getting that caught. You need to be able to go your entire length of this circle with one thread. If you knot it and then attach a new length, you're not gonna be able to gather it up in one fell swoop. I've done all of my stitches and I'm going to pop it out now. And then I take the cogs out. And then I start to pull in my fabric. Now I can cut these, this, because this is quite a bit of excess, I could cut that down, or I could have used, you know, a circle that didn't, I just had a pre-cut circle and didn't bother cutting it down. Typically I would not have this much fabric inside. I think it's kind of interesting to see the lines kind of twirling around like that. One of the things I like to do is do this one extra little bit here at the end. And I usually do it when the yo-yo is, when the um, plastic is still attached. I just go back in to that first hole that I started with. And the reason is, is because when you tighten it like this, it can help give this whole thing that kind of twirl look. There it is, ready to be applied however I might want to apply it. What I do is when I make these, I just then detach my needle from this and I have a little baggie and I just put this in with all the others so that I have a little stash of them. I thought I'd show you a yo-yo using wool. So I have my wool circle here. It's about a quarter of an inch bigger than this circle, which should be just big enough. I'm going to center my cog wheel on the wool circle, line up my dash with my little nub here. Well, there, it just did. With this, if I want, I can do, I can use my Alana wool. It's pretty strong and I like to match the color of the wool that I'm using with the thread. So I'm going to, same thing, and I'm gonna go down into my little smile. This is now where I started, so I'm just gonna come up and go back down. This is pull my plastic out, remove the cog wheel. I like to place my fingers in here just so that they everything kind of goes as I want it to. Also making sure that I push that excess fabric down inside. Now I can put a knot here so that I keep my tension. It's going to come apart if I just kind of leave it alone and throw it in my bag. But that's what I get. This is Dupioni silk, which I've backed with Presto's shear. It's a really fine fusible. And the reason I put it on Dupioni silk is because Dupioni silk frays horribly. I then just took my medium and my small yo-yo and I just traced around it. I'm going to go ahead and put my the cogged wheel looking piece down, line up the dash with the knob till it clicks, holding my excess down. I'm using for this, it's a variegated razzle just because the color I thought blended with this better than anything else I could find. This is where I began, so I'm going to 
come up and just go over that first one again. Push this out, pull this. The selvage is thick here, so if I, if I don't want it so fat, I could have cut that down. I'm going to make a little knot in this. This is my silk velvet. I'm planning to do a yo-yo in the medium. I'm going to just use this Eleganza EZM31. Put my fabric face down into my little wheel. Let's see where my little knob is. It's right there. Get my little dash. See if that's lining up. It looks like it is. Press it in. Here it snap. Turn it over and begin with my little smile. From one outer edge of the smile to the other. And that's where I began. So I'll push this out. Get my little teeth out of here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this again, pulling as I go. And there is my little velvet yo-yo. Okay, I'm going to tie my knot here to keep it from coming undone. So here I did three yo-yos and a folded hexi. I tacked the yo-yos down with just applique thread. I did a whole series of yo-yos. With these yo-yos, I did stitches on them. This is a linen yo-yo. These are silk. This is a, a, a wool and silk blend, and I put French knots on them. This one I did running stitches around, sort of in a spiral shape, every other. This is another silk yo-yo. Again, I just tacked it down with an applique thread. This is a knitted leaf, and I'll, I'll show how to do that someday, too. On my indigo vase piece, I did a yo-yo. I then added a little velvet circle on the top, which I then just applique down with thread. And here, I did a wheat ear stitch going all the way around the bottom. This yo-yo I did in just a cotton print. Again, you can see how I stitched it down with applique thread. And then I stuck a little wool dot on top. I really appreciate you watching and I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. You need to click on the little bell next to the subscribe button to get an email notification when the next video is published. I love hearing from you. Leave me any comments or questions you might have in the comment section below and don't forget to check out the description section. That's where I leave links to all the different things I've used including where to get yo-yos, a link to where you can purchase the three sizes, where you can get the hand-dyed velvet, wool, dupioni silk. I leave links, links for all of those things. Until next time, here's to exploring the different things that we can use in our projects together.